This is the new 24 half band metal set of Daniel Smith watercolours. It's designed around a classic cool and warm yellow, cool and warm red, cool and warm blue with additional yellow, reds and blues. It's really useful greens and a lovely range of earth pigments. So really useful set for just about anything that you would wish to paint. I'm doing them in a slightly different order from what they appear in the palette. In a way that just makes sense to me. So I'm starting with Buff Titanium. This is a single pigment colour. It's PW6 colon 1. That means pigment white and it's an unbleached white. It's useful for beaches and marble and a whole lot of urban sketching subjects. You can also mix very interesting colours, uh, sort of pastely hues. The next one is Hands Yellow Light. This is a classic cool or lemony yellow made with PY3. Equally, you could have a mid yellow our hands are yellow medium, but for this palette it's kind of helpful to have a classic warm and a cool as well as some other interesting colours to explore. Hands are yellow deep is a traditional warm yellow. It's made with a lovely pigment PY65. It's considered warm because it leans towards orange. So it will make beautiful, bright oranges. Quinacridone Gold is a hue. It's created using PY150, which is the yellow pigment, and a very transparent one. It's also known as Nickel Azo Yellow. And to that is added PO48, which is a quinacridone burnt orange. Creates a very realistic hue of the original PO49 quinacridone cold colour with some granulation. Pyrrole Scarlet is my favourite version of a warm red. It definitely leans to the orange side. And so it will mix amazing oranges with either of these two warm yellows. While this is a bright high chroma yellow, this one's a little bit more neutralised, so it can make wonderful realistic colours. Pyrrole Scarlet is made with PR, pigment red, 255. It's a beautiful colour on its own, slightly less transparent than some but a really lovely, rich orange red. Permanent Alizarin Crimson is a mixture of three pigments that create a hue of Alizarin Crimson without the problems of light fastness. It's a little bit richer than the original Alizarin Crimson colour as well. It's a wonderful, rich, deep crimson colour. Quinacridone Rose is made with pigment violet, PV19. Absolutely beautiful mixing red because it will act as a primary and create both oranges and purples if you mix it. And it's so good at making purples that it'll make different purples with any of your blues and also even with phthalo green. It's one of the reasons that there doesn't need to be purple in this set. You can create so many variations.
like all the quinacridones. It's very transparent, very light fast, and a beautiful bright colour. Next one is ultramarine. This is a PB29. So it's a slightly warm or purpley blue. And this is a granulating colour. So you'll see slight speckled look. That's usually the case when there are slightly larger particles of pigment and they clump together a little bit on the surface. You can see how this purpley blue and, and sort of purpley red will make beautiful purple colours, purple hues. Cerulean chromium is made out of PB36. There is also a version made out of PB35, but this one is cooler or more greenish. It's also granulating and easier to lift off the paper than other cool blues. It's a very rich, beautiful colour for skies, mixed with or without the ultramarine. Sometimes phthalo blue are fairly scary colour because it's very staining, very powerful, but it's a terrific mixing colour and will create a really lovely range of turquoise colours and rich darks, depending on what you mix it with. It's the neutralising pair for Pyrrhal Scarlet. This is Thalo Blue Green Shade, made out of PB15, colon 3. The red shade is usually made out of 15, colon 6. Cobalt Turquoise is a really beautiful granulating turquoise colour. And while you can make amazing turquoises by mixing phthalo blue and phthalo green, they won't have the granulation of this one. You can create a similar hue by mixing the phthalo, sorry, the, the cerulean blue with phthalo green, but I like the granulation of this colour. And it's beautiful for the effect of copper and uh, the oxidisation of copper. And phthalo green, another rather scary colour. It's, if there's one rule of watercolour, it is not to use this alone, but as a mixing colour, it is really amazing. You can make incredible greens by mixing this, not only with yellows, but also with all the earth pigments to create realistic and very usable greens. And as I mentioned, it also makes gorgeous turquoise colours when you mix it with phthalo blue. I'm going to carry on around this way. I kind of like the idea of just continuing with the circle of colours. So the next one here is Perylene Green. Perylene green is actually made from a black pigment, but it's such an amazing colour, a rich shadow green, really useful for foliage and the, um, the sort of shadowy colours that we see when we're working with dark, distant landscape colours. So it's a, a deep, bluey green kind of colour. Made with PBK31. Undersea green is a really lovely mixed pigment green. Many of the most useful greens are mixed pigments. This one was the original quinacridone gold mixed with ultramarine. So this is now made out of three pigments, the PY150, PO48 and PB29. It's a very realistic green, great for distant mountains, also a perfect colour for a lot of Australian natives. We have a lot of dull greens here. Next is sap green. This is another very usable colour straight from the tube. 
it was also originally made with phthalo green and quinacridone gold, so it's still made from that hue. It's now a three colour mix with the phthalo green and the quinacridone gold pigments of PY150 and PO48. But these three also work really nicely together to give the idea of the, the fresh growth or the detail or the neutralised colours and the shadow colours. So they're three very useful convenience greens. The next one is Raw Sienna Light. This is the only one in the set that is different to what I'd suggested and it's a colour I haven't used much. So it's made with PY42, which is another yellow pigment. This will also mix greens. Um, I would tend to use raw sienna made with PBR7, which will actually not mix greens, which can have its own use. So this is one that's not a colour I've particularly explored. Then we have yellow ochre. It's one of the most ancient pigments in the world. Made out of PY43 and this is a beautiful version. It's a relatively transparent version of yellow ochre which can often be a quite opaque colour. It'll make lovely greens when it's mixed with either a blue or with phthalo green. Goethite is an absolute favourite. It's a, a unique colour to Daniel Smith. It is incredibly granulating, earthy, yellow pigment made with the same pigment as this, PY43, but the granulation is really unique. So I use it for sandstone and beaches and as an interesting colour for a lot of landscapes and buildings. Quinacridone burnt orange is a beautiful mixing colour. So it is made out of PO48, and a lovely burnt orange colour. It mixes an extraordinary range of, of earthy browns and blues and greys if you mix it with phthalo blue or ultramarine. But it's also quite beautiful on its own. A burnt orange of, of many forms can be very, very helpful in watercolour to speed up the mixing and particularly for making various greys. Burnt Sienna is a favourite because it gives you a, a very convenient sort of uh, skin tone type kind of colour. You can see how useful that is in its lightest form. But it's also a lovely colour for landscapes and a lot of botanicals. And of course it makes beautiful greys once you mix it with blues, particularly with ultramarine. This is made with PBR7. So it's a brown earth pigment. Next up is Indian Red and this is an unusual colour because it's actually the most opaque if you let it be. But if you water it right down it's a dusty pink colour. More powerful than Potter's Pink. It will really go very very strong and as I say totally opaque if you let it. And this is another colour that I love as part of an earth triad with either Goethite or yellow ochre and cerulean chromium. It's the only colour that will actually be completely opaque in that it will cover a line totally if you choose. Next we have burnt umber. So this is the warmer version of the umbers. It's a lovely chocolate brown and I find these sorts of colours really really useful. It's not an essential colour in the sense that you can create this hue by mixing burnt sienna and ultramarine. But often it's useful, just as we have warms and cools of the yellows, the reds, the blues, and even the greens. It can actually be useful to have a warm and a cool dark brown. Lovely for landscapes and tree studies and a lot of botanical work. It's also useful for buildings. As is burnt sienna. And as is the next one, 
raw umber. So raw umber is our cool dark partner to burnt umber and I really like this. I use it a lot in landscapes and in urban sketches. It's also useful in portraits and in a lot of botanical studies and it'll make amazing rich greens if you mix it with phthalate green. And the last one's Jones Grey, which is a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. There's just a little bit more of the ultramarine to make it a grey that sits only just on the blue side. It's great as a neutral tint and as a shadow colour. And because it is liftable and rather than staining, it's wonderful for clouds and skies and lifting out details. It's a combination that's made by many, many people, but it's so useful that to have it as a, as a colour you can just dip your brush into as a start, rather than having to mix it on the fly, makes it easier to get strong darks when you want them. And it can be made more neutral by adding a touch more burnt sienna, or more blue, obviously, by adding more ultramarine. 